Okay, so today we're going to take a look at this Rise Spray 35mm f1.2 full frame lens. Manual focus only. Um, I was kind of nervous about buying this lens because there were no reviews online yet. In fact, this might be the first one if I ever put this on YouTube. I got it from uh, AliExpress for uh, $195.50 US, uh, 245,000 won here in Korea. And I can tell you that it is indeed a real lens. That's one thing I was worried about. I actually measured the, the diameter here of the iris and the focal length, and it, it is one point, it is f1.2, I think. I mean, this is non-scientific. But, uh, so we're here at this abandoned, undisclosed, abandoned university in uh, Korea to try it out. I'm sure I'm not the only one who is wondering the legit legitimacy of this lens. And I, well, here it is. It's real. 35. Yeah, the, um, the markings are painted on, which is not too high class, but uh, you know the rye spray name. They make what adapters and other lenses um this one's metal solid it's built like a tank it's uh 580 grams uh it has a 62 millimeter filter thread uh, and i don't have a filter for it yet but uh 13 aperture blades blades for a nice round bokeh <laughs> so it's just the autumn season here in korea this university was abandoned, I don't know how long ago, but uh, certainly remnants of it being a university. It goes, it extends all the way up there. Really an interesting place. Look at this. We've got some... Uh, sculpture? We've got some notes. There's a modem. Some notes overflowing here. So let's take a walk around this campus and uh, we'll take some shots. This is going to be a very, very amateur review, especially since I've never done one before. And um, yeah, it's not scientific. I just want to reassure you, I don't work for this company, of course, that, uh, that uh, it is real. I took a gamble. It came in the mail quickly, actually and has so far pleased me. I mean, if you're going to be really picky, and I hope some picky reviewer does take a look and tell me what's actually wrong with it, but I'll be taking some pictures and uh, sharing them, discussing. All right, so to continue this unscientific test, I'm going to show you some sample photos I took today straight out of the camera, no processing not very well exposed or whatever but here we are this is about this is the university gate at about 5.6 or 8 um, there's no indication in the EXIF data of the actual aperture because it's a manual lens and there are no electronic connectors um, so walking up this is about another f5.6 or 8 something like that uh, then looking through a window I kept that setting the same. It's probably 5.6. Then I opened it up to 1.2. You can see there's a lot more light uh, let in, but um, a lot of detail is lost. It becomes really... Uh, the the depth of field is so shallow that uh, anything... I must have focused in the background, so the foreground's out of focus. This pile of garbage is uh, f1.2. Uh, then back outside, maybe 5.6. Of course, it exposed only for the shadows, not for uh, these highlights over here. Um, this broom, I must have been walking around at 5.6, so uh, this is the closest focusing distance, and then I dropped it to f1.2, and you can really see the background just melt away. And if you're interested in the quality of the bokeh, well, there you go. Maybe some... Um, some harsher lines in some areas, but generally very soft. I mean, compared to 5.6. Look at that, and look at this. Uh, this would be about f 2.8, 
and then open to f1.2. Um, again, a very shallow depth of field. I focused on the speaker, and the light above it is just out of that uh, the focal region. That's not a good picture. That's a what would that be? Maybe this is f1.2. Not closest focusing. Just wanted to uh, get the signs. So, yeah, most of the sign is in focus, and the background is blurred. This bus stop, this disused bus stop, has seen better days. Uh, I did focus on the back of the shelter, and it is at f1.2. I'm across the street, so you can see how much is in focus in this kind of situation. Then I try to test with the spider. Now the spider is at f1.2. It's really difficult. The depth of field is so shallow that there's not much of the spider in focus, just something in the middle here. But can you see what's in the background? No. So let's close it down. On the lens there are markings um, for f1.2 and the next one is f2. So this is uh, about halfway between and I can't guess what that would be maybe f1.4 or something. Uh, then to f2 we get more of the web in focus, more of the spider. This is, uh, what's the next marking? 2.8, f2.8 and we can start seeing some background appearing. This is f4 and you can kinda tell what we're looking at. Uh, f5.6 f8 and then the final marking F16 and you can see that we're looking at some stairs. This is the closest focusing distance so this is what you can expect. But uh, going back down to F1.2 I mean look at that. There's, no, there's nothing there. Of course there's not too much detail in the spider either. Okay, uh, this was a fencing mask at F1.2 uh, not closest focusing distance. I'm 10 feet away or something. I don't know. I for 8 feet. Uh, you can see the stairs in the background are pretty uh, blurred out. Then uh, the halfway between 1.2 and 2.8. Then we've got uh, f2.8, f4, f5.6, uh, f8, and f16. And you can see the, the quality, the color is changing a lot actually when we're, when we're closing down the aperture. Much uh, yellower, warmer when it's wide open. And then becoming uh, like this <laughs> when it's uh, stopped down. Uh, that's a boring picture of some garbage. This is one F1.2. This is another F1.2 of a side of a building, and you can see that the corners really do uh, lose a lot of detail. But depending on what you want to lose this, use this lens for, you can make it work for you. F1.2, I was focusing on this uh, railing knob. I wanted to see what happened to the background, and there you go. Um, what did I do here? Yeah, this would have been f1.2 focusing kind of in this region and then going to f5.6 like if you want a better landscape photo and maybe f8 uh, what did we do? Yeah, this one would have been an f1.2 just to try it out focusing up here and then maybe an f8 this was definitely f1.2 because I wanted to see uh, what would happen if I focused on these weeds in the foreground but I'm far enough away that the background is not too blurry I don't remember what this was but judging by the corners and the vignetting it's probably wide open and then stop down to 5.6 or 8 uh, yeah, these two shots. Okay, so this one, the first one, this is F1, just to see what would happen. You know, the area in the center of the frame is in focus. But if you want more, then you're going to have to stop it down to F5.8. This is F1.2. Just wanted to see what would happen there, focusing on this uh, bent tree. Uh, I did another test here at this door, um, stopping it down from 1.2. So that's 1.2. Uh, somewhere in the middle, maybe 1.4, then 
then um, f2, 2.8, 4, 5.6, 8, and 16. So at, at f16 you actually lose a bit of detail unless I didn't adjust my focus properly. Uh, this could have been f1.2. Then uh, on these weeds, um, let me look at them. Oh yeah, so what the first one would be around f2 and then open to f1.2. So you can see the depth of field is so incredibly shallow. But it's interesting to see what happens uh, in the background here. This mask. Okay, so this mask, this picture is f1.2 and then about f2. F1.2, uh, yeah, does amazing things with the background. The depth of field is way too shallow to actually get the whole mask in focus, though. Uh, and then just some other ones. What did I do here? That might have been an F1.2. Uh, that was F1.2, focusing on these vines, and then uh, stopping down to F5.6 to get the more abandoned shelter. F1.2. This area was kind of neat. I think this was wider, judging by the foreground here. Maybe F1.2. This was definitely F1.2. Kind of interesting effect. Uh, the seats, yeah, this is F1.2. They, the ones uh, around the corner just kind of melt away. Um, then I did another test of the different apertures here. So this is f1.2, uh, starting at f1.2, uh, approximately f1.4, then f2, then f4, then 5.6, 8, and 16. Uh, that's just the top of that decaying gazebo. That's at f1.2, so that's kind of interesting. You can get, uh, I guess the dandelion was shallow enough that I could get it in focus. There's another f1.2. And again, and again. This uh, future human animal intervention center does not have much of a future, I can tell you that much with these stalactites developing. That's f1.2 from farther away and then 5.6. Here's uh, an information board. This one is f1.2 and then about f2.8. Here's just a shot of the abandoned track at uh, 5.6 or 8 just to see what a, what a landscape photo would look like. So yeah, when you, when you do stop it down you're gonna get more detail in the corners. Here's the pile of dishes. Uh, this would have been maybe 5.6. So in low lighting, this is pretty decent. I think it was still a low ISO. I had it on uh, auto ISO. And then f1.2. And you lose the details of you know these plates in the corners here. f1.2 and finally f1.2 so yeah I shot all of these on a Sony a7 II so the ISO is pretty good too even if you close the aperture down and the ISO shoots up it'll still look pretty decent um, so there you have it if you like what you see here I'd say roll the dice for that price why not Well, I gotta say, this um, manual Rise Spray 35mm f1.2 uh, is performing apparently well, of course, on the small screen. So we'll take it home and look at some pictures on the larger screen. And uh, maybe I'll even get around to posting this video, just because I'm sure some of you are wondering, is this real? Could it be possible? Has Rye Spray made a 35mm f1.2? Well, I'm here to, to show you, yes!
and uh, hopefully we'll get somebody else more knowledgeable about cameras and lenses and can do some scientific tests uh, to show us what this can really do. But uh, just I guess the purpose of this video is to make you feel more confident that uh, it does exist. So check it out if you can. It's only, what did I say it was, 190 bucks US? 199.50 US uh, on AliExpress. And um, yeah, enjoy it. I hope it works out for you.